Hello, welcome to this video lesson. Today we are going to be discussing an introduction to literacy difficulties. Intervention and corrective instruction come in many forms. Although specialized techniques are sometimes used, intervention and corrective instruction are often simply more individualized applications of methods employed in the regular classroom. They can be classified as part to whole, whole to part, or interactive. In the part to whole or bottom up approach, students learn the nuts and bolts of reading and assemble them into a whole. Proceeding from the bottom of the process, they learn letter sounds and then blend them into whole words, which are then read in brief stories. Incorporating the belief that reading is easier if it is broken down into its parts and then reconstructed. Many corrective programs have taken this approach. In the whole to part or top down approach, students start at the top of the reading process and proceed downward to letters and sounds. Instruction is initiated by reading whole stories with teacher assistance. Through reading whole stories and by using their knowledge of language patterns, students learn individual printed words and letter sound relationships. Holistic approaches are based on top down view of reading. Students learn to read and write by being immersed in meaningful literacy activities. Whereas in bottom up approach, meaning is constructed by decoding words and assembling sentences and paragraphs, in a top down approach, meaning is inferred. In this class, reading is viewed as an interaction between part whole and whole part approaches. Reading is simultaneously both top down and bottom up. The truth is that readers, especially ones with serious problems, need to use all of the reading processes. Because low achieving readers often have difficulty decoding words, there is a temptation to focus on lower level processes such as sounding out words and literal comprehension. However, reading is very much a total language process. The most effective programs for struggling readers are those that include a strong decoding component along with plenty of opportunity to apply skills by reading and writing. Adams theorized that orthographic letter, phonological sound, meaning, and context processors all work simultaneously to decode words. However, the way that processors are brought into play is partly dependent on the nature of the task. As adept readers, our decoding skills become so well learned and rapid that they function automatically. There are times, however, when bottom-up processes are brought to the forefront. Notice how consciously you use decoding skills as you read this sentence. Did you notice that you had to deliberately sound out each word? With your processes being slowed down, were you also able to notice how you used your knowledge of language and background experience along with decoding skills to reconstruct the sentence? What students learn is heavily determined by the social and cultural constructs of what is learned. Problems are likely to arise when one approach is overemphasized to the detriment of the other. No! Problem readers are a diverse group. The majority have difficulty decoding, However, there are a number of excellent decoders who have difficulty understanding what they read. Depending on the nature, severity, and source of the problem, programs for low achieving readers will vary. However, a number of basic principles should be incorporated to any program created to help students who are struggling with reading and writing. Prevention, of course, is vastly superior to correction. Prevention safeguards self-esteem eliminates ineffective strategies before they are hardened into habit, and saves limited corrective resources for those who most desperately need it. In reading, as in life, nothing succeeds like success. With success, there's increased effort and more success. A result for teaching for success is building on what is known. All too often, corrective instruction focuses on what the student doesn't know or can't do. The emphasis should be on building on what the student already knows. The phrase learned helplessness is often used to describe low achieving readers. 
Having a history of failure, they see themselves as unable to cope successfully with reading and writing tasks. Often, well-meaning teachers fall into the trap of unwittingly reinforcing learned helplessness. To foster independence never do for students what they can do for themselves. A result of fostering independence is to never accept anything but the student's best. If students are accustomed to having substandard work accepted by overly sympathetic teachers, they internalize their lower expectations. The greatest compliment teachers can pay students is to reject inferior efforts. By accepting only their students' bests, teachers say, I have faith in you. Expectations, of course, need to be realistic. In addition to providing direct instruction to struggling readers, it is important to adapt instruction to meet individual variations in interest and background and in preferences for strategies. No one intervention package fits all needs. The structured phonics system, which works so well with some low achieving readers, is frustrating to students who prefer a more holistic approach. Teaching and assessment should merge. Initial instruction should be based on an assessment that highlights the student's strengths and weaknesses and establishes an appropriate level of instruction. Because low achieving readers and writers often manifest difficulty with subskills such as decoding, oral reading, spelling, and handwriting, there is a natural temptation to remedy the deficiency by providing lots of extra practice in the poorly developed skill. Instead of reading intriguing trade books or composing imaginative stories, they spend their time filling in blanks on worksheets or reading brief unrelated selections and answering low-level multiple choice questions. Fisher, Frey, and Lapp state, we must commit to our students and help them read increasingly complex texts and read those texts well. Although it is an essential ingredient surrounding students with interesting readable books and intriguing writing and reading tasks is not enough. Struggling readers and writers need a program of direct, intensive, systematic instruction presented in the context of lots of real reading and writing. Intervention programs should maximize success by developing needed background, vocabulary, concepts, and skills before students read a selection. Poor readers and writers often have difficulty organizing and relating new knowledge to what they already know. Using a unit or theme approach is one way of helping low achieving readers form the kind of cognitive connections that adept readers make on their own. We literally learn to read by reading. In order to develop their capacities fully, poor readers need to make up for lost time. They need to read more, not less, than their higher achieving peers. If students are to engage in wide reading, reading should be relatively easy. In instructional settings, students apparently do best when they know 95 to 98% of the words in a selection. There is a belief that students will do better if given materials on their grade level, even if they are reading below grade level. Research says otherwise. One characteristic of all successful intervention programs is making sure that students are reading books that are on their level. Struggling readers also need a sense of community. By being accepted and valued in the classroom and in reading and writing groups, struggling readers are motivated to try harder. And, of course, they're better able to learn from their peers. RTI is a school-wide improvement program that enlists all staff members the community, and parents to ensure that all students' literacy potential is fully developed. The idea behind RTI is that all staff members will work together to provide each student with effective instruction. Although it is possible to remediate literacy difficulties without knowing their causes, it can help us plan a better program if we know why a student is struggling. If, through a careful assessment, we become aware that a student has a specific difficulty Modifications can be made in the program that can help the student. Current trends emphasize collaboration among all professionals and the provision of initial corrective instruction within the classroom. 
Think about the way you process information. Which approach do you favor?